Well, chat, I feel like we have to keep going. Normally is around the time where I'd switch over to Madden. I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take the day off, like I said, after some uh, some interesting officiating in the NFL world. We'll have it be an All NBA night. Uh, why not? So let's go through this off season here. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, I will obviously be picking up the option for uh, Justin Holiday as well. Why not? Uh, for you guys, Clay Thompson, obviously pick up the two-year team option. No reason. So quick and easy decisions there. Uh, Monta Ellis will be a free agent, as will Andre Iguodala, Brandon Roy. We look at the qualifying offers. You guys do have a qualifying offer for Ty Lawson, so you will be able to match any contract that he gets, or you can just outright sign him. Uh, Lonnie Madsen is trash. Cunningham is still a really solid depth option. Uh, Colin Brewer, honestly, a 67 at 22 and a B. He's kind of trash. You might as well keep him for that cheap, though, just to be a, a depth option. Uh, for my team, Brian Miller. Let go of him. Alex Murphy, let go of him. Devin Mitchell, let go of him. And Jim Edwards, be letting go of him. Beautiful. So, Lawson would not count as one of your signings. No, he's an RFA, so you are allowed to just outright sign him. Uh, so for you guys right now, again, technically you can bring back Lawson and include him with Paul. Clay Thompson at shooting guard, Beasley at forward, Love, and now Lyles, Anderson, and Plumley at center. Uh, for myself, Campazzo at point guard, Oladipo, got Leonard and Bullock, Hickson and Covington, Drummond and Vaughn. I managed to get the depth that I wanted, which is nice. My team's a hell of a lot better than it was just a season ago. So, in free agency, at point guard, again, RFAs are very difficult to sign. Um, you guys can bring back Ty Lawson if you want to. I mean, you might as well try, although it might depend on the money circumstances. Uh, but the best UFA point guard is Rodney Stuckey. Uh, easily. At this point, um, you guys might as well send an offer to Lawson and then you can decline signing him if it means not getting somebody else. Um, so you might as well send him an offer and then you can try to trade him too. But he is a really good sixth man for you. So you might as well at least send that offer in. Um, let's look here. At shooting guard, Harden and DeRozan as RFAs, Ellis as a UFA. You got a veteran like Manu Ginobili. A couple of veterans in the mix there. At forward, Josh Smith, Andre Iguodala. Both UFAs, as is Danilo Gallinari. Power forward, I mean Blake Griffin's an RFA, but Paul Millsap. It's the biggest name there. And Abaka's an RFA, so Robin Lopez is really the top center available. Uh, Tristan Thompson's out there as well. Again, I let go of him, and whatever team kept him, didn't keep him. So, shout out to Tristan Thompson being out there. Maybe I bring him back. <laughs> Maybe I do. So, you know your options at this point, chat. I'm seeing a lot of Iguodala. Any other suggestions? Any other suggestions outside of Iguodala? Thompson did have an A potential last we knew, but he could have gotten worse. So, any other suggestions, or is it just Andre Iguodala? Lawson, you already have an offer in on. And again, if you have to choose, ooh, Iguodala. You actually can't afford Iguodala. The only reason why you could afford Lawson is because of the bird years. If you add a couple of clauses and go one year, he has one other offer right now. You could compete with him. The Bulls aren't offering him a great deal either. You could still compete with Iguodala. It won't be a long-term deal for the year, but you can still compete for him. So you got that decision to make. You definitely will not have the money to sign Tristan Thompson. Yeah, given what he wants, you don't have a hope in hell of signing Tristan Thompson. Um, so from what I'm seeing still, it's it's probably Iguodala. 
More than likely. At most, you can say shut down the Lawson deal and then pick Iguodala over him. But again, the Lawson contract right now is not affecting the offer that you can send out to Iguodala. It's not. You would have to choose between one or the other, though, more than likely. So, I'll let you guys decide. Is it Lawson? Is it Iguodala? What are you thinking? There is a chance you'd have to choose between one of them. You could go for Ibaka, but he's an RFA, and you won't have the money to sign him, so no. So... All right, I'm still seeing a lot of support for Iguodala, so I'm going to send out the max offer for him that you guys can send. And uh, we'll see if you get him. We'll see if you get him. And he immediately declined. Well, uh, keeping Lawson around looks to be about the best you can do. Um, otherwise, you're looking, I mean, you don't need Devin Harris. You don't really need Jameer Nelson at all. Uh, you could go for Chris Humphreys, <laughs> Charlie Villanueva. Uh, based on the money, you could go for Robin Lopez. Why only a one-year deal? Because it gave him the max option. He didn't want the other. He didn't want term. All star. Thank you for the uh, the primer there. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Um, could go for Thaddeus Young. It is true that uh, one Danilo Gallinari was there. Uh, but at his asking price, not likely. Not likely. Chat doesn't appear as though you guys are going to be able to do too much here. Let's be honest. Based on the asking price, if we look at affordable, I mean, obviously Ty Lawson... Which, again, the money you're offering him isn't affecting what you can offer other people because of the bird rights and how that takes part in negotiations. At point guard, TJ Ford, I mean, you're not getting much. Chandler Parsons is the best forward you could sign right now. We're a veteran like Tony Allen. Again, just off of what the game deems as affordable. Kendrick Perkins, I mean, there's not much you can do. For the Cavaliers... Just to see, how much money do I have to play with? Oh, I can sign anybody. Beautiful. Beautiful. <sighs> so what do I want to do here? What do I want to do? If I run Campazzo as the backup, point guard really wouldn't be that bad. I got depth everywhere. Nope, don't do that. I need to sign the best guy that I can. Josh Smith would directly compete, though. It's Rodney Stuckey at point guard. Monta Ellis. Tyreek Evans is an RFA. Manu is an old man. Iguodala. If I'm going for a difference maker... Might honestly be Rodney Stuckey at point guard. I feel like I'd have to overpay to get him, but I feel like that's the way to go. Chad, have you made a decision? Are you going to go after anybody, just so I know? Oladipo Depot shooting guard. Get him to play. But Campazzo's only a C+. Seeing a lot of people shout out Tony Allen. Okay. For Chad's options... I'm seeing cheap offer for Tony Allen being mentioned a lot. Uh, so that'll be the play, especially because apparently it would be league men. So. Chats one offers to Tony Allen. Uh, for me, no doubt about it. I mean, it's got to be Rodney Stuckey. I need a better point guard. Unless I want to tank for another year. Stucky might make me a little bit too good, but I do have other draft picks. Campazzo as a starter could do pretty well. I'm just trying to see if I like believe in the core that I have right now. If these guys develop, they could be pretty damn good. Campazzo could be six man. 
caliber. I wouldn't mind bringing back Tristan Thompson, but yeah, given that he wants fucking fourteen to seventeen million dollars, uh, it's just not going to happen. Oh, boy, if I don't go for Rodney Stuckey, there's really nobody else that makes sense unless I were to go after one of the RFAs. That's the only other thing that makes sense. Either go... What the hell's the Steph Curry situation? I could go for Rodney Stuckey. But at the same time, if I swing for the fences and land an RFA in Steph Curry, which again, you can go for RFAs, it's just you're unlikely to get them. I could get Stucky and get the guarantee. If I don't land him, then I have Compazzo. I could go for Steph Curry. I mean, if I'm going to swing for the fences on a big name, why not fucking swing? Stucky makes my team good, but he's not elite. I'm going for Steph Curry. And if I don't get him, then I have Campazzo for a year and I see what he can do as a starter. I'm going after Steph Curry. If I compare him. If I compare him. With Kawhi Leonard. I'm putting in the offer for Steph Curry. For Chats, Timberwolves, Tony Allen and Ty Lawson have both agreed to new contracts. Is there any point for you guys to leave a cap hold on Kevin Best? No, there is not. Was there any point for Lonnie Madsen? No. Colin Brewer. Yeah, might as well. Uh, Tim Monroe, not really. And then Sean Wright, was there any reason for you guys to keep him? Not really. Dante Cunningham, still a good depth option for you guys, but you get Allen and Lawson. I don't have an answer, and I got a feeling... The Steph Curry thing didn't happen, which is okay. Um, I'll drop the cap hold on Brandon Rush. Mitchell Edwards. Michael Red. Hell yeah, I'm keeping a cap hold on Michael Red. <laughs> Even if it doesn't mean that he stays. Mike, I just want you to know that I wish you could stay. Luke Walton can definitely go. Steph Curry goes back to Golden State. They match the offer sheet. Uh, which is fine. Which is fine. It was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. But Rodney Stuckey wasn't the guy to fix my team. So. Oh, yeah, I won. They had to match the deal. He would have signed here. That's what it means by match. He said yes to me, but Golden State said, fuck that. We'll keep him. So I almost had him. It was worth a shot. Very, very much so. But we didn't get him, and that's okay. So with that, we will go through free agency. We can get that for RFA. Again, RFA tries are fucking tough, man. They're fucking tough. Like it's just it's a crapshoot, especially depending on the amount of offers that are in. So Curry stays with the Warriors. Looks like all the big names pretty much stayed where they were. Monta Ellis went to uh, Charlotte, which is pretty good for them. Stucky ended up going to the Jazz instead, so he goes to the Western Conference. Uh, Manu stayed with the Spurs. Millsap goes to the Clippers. Iguodala went to the Nets, though. Brandon Roy back to the Blazers. Yeah, a lot of people stayed where they were. Fair enough. Um, you guys have a chance to match an offer for Dante Cunningham. You might as well. $1 million for a 75 overall player. That's, that's not a problem at all. So, in terms of player progression, Kawhi up to a 90. Drummond up by four to an 82. Justin Holiday also improved. Hickson's not getting much better, but he's at least serviceable. For you guys, Kevin Love a 91. Clay now an A minus potential. And up to an 85. Turns out he's working out pretty well for you. Beasley up to an 81. Lyles a 79. You guys are still looking competitive. 100% still looking competitive. Tony Allen just regressed before he even fucking played a game for you. At least you signed him to League Men. So your window's open now. Mine's not too far away. But the question is, with the Thunder sticking together, can you guys get past them? Can you get past them? It is the 2013-14 season. Andrew Wiggins, Embiid, Jokic. It's another big 
draft. Marcus Smart, Bogdanovich, Zach Levine. Uh, there's some good players in this draft as well, of course. And when we're talking about the upcoming draft picks, the Cavs have their own first and Memphis's. Of course, the Grizzlies uh, did make the playoffs last year. Uh, shout out to three first rounds next year. Uh, for you guys, it is just your first and the Pelicans second. As we will take a look here at the teams. Let's see what we have. So for the Cavs. For the Cavs. Oh, I can little move on. I'm going to run with the 10-man bench. Ooh, I signed Keon Dooling. Yeah, Campazzo, Oladipo, Leonard, Hickson, Drummond. I actually have a team after tearing shit down for years. I got a decent young team. The Timberwolves. Probably worth running 9 instead of 10. But for you guys, Paul, Thompson, Beasley, Love, Lyles. You got Lawson, Cunningham, and Plumley coming off the bench. You could win this, man. You could easily win this. This could be your year, finally. It's, it's solid. But... You know, you got your best player in Ty Lawson on the bench. And I mean, think about who you traded, you know? Unreal. Unreal. But yeah, I think we're uh, I think we're good to go, right? I think we're good to start. I mean, the trading block for you guys, I mean, it's it's the same thing, right? Just leave the core as untouchable. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you want to leave options open for Lawson and Beasley if something were to pop up, but at least the big three don't go anywhere. You could argue with the other ones if you wanted. Uh, and for the trade block, I mean, you don't have too much to add. Put Beasley on the block. Interesting. All right. You're putting Lawson. Lawson can't be dealt yet. I mean, you might as well put Plumley there, too, after you drafted him, just to see if anything pops up. Can't deal Tony Allen yet either. I don't know if you'd change anything. And I mean, to be honest, your pick's going to be late. You might as well put that there. See what the offers are. Beasley has uh, flatlined in terms of development. It's a solid player. Not going to be a superstar, though. Doesn't have to be with the fucking people around him. Uh, and for my Cavaliers... Or the Cavaliers. Kawhi is untouchable. Those two first rounders are untouchable. And on the block, uh, Justin Holiday could go. That way McCollum plays a little bit more. Bullock, Covington, Vaughn. All right, we're good there. Justin Holiday try to move on from him, open up room for McCollum. Worst case scenario, move McCollum. Try to find somebody better. Shout out to Keon Dooling. Won a championship with him. It's amazing how many players keep ending up back on my team that I won a championship with. We do have the whole um, G League option. I could, for the moment, put McCollum down. Honestly, I am going to put CJ McCollum uh, down on the Canton charge to start the season. Uh, for you guys, you don't have any prospects like that to put, unless you want to put Plumley down there until Anderson gets traded. Any disagreements about that? Just put Plumley down there so he's not competing with Anderson and he's at least playing full time. I don't think that would be the worst decision in the world for you. That is what I would do given that you also have Chris Anderson on the block. So, any disagreements about putting Plumley down, essentially in the minors, to make sure he's playing? All right, doesn't look like it. So he'll be on the Iowa Wolves. And again, he'll get that playing time. Um, and actually, since we both just did that, let's double check the game plans really quickly, because that can affect what we're doing. So yeah, I'm going to drop down to a nine-man bench now. And whoops. You guys, 
Yeah, you can run an eight now at this stage. Well, actually, you can run a nine, and then when Tony Allen's here, you'll be all right. But, yeah, again, any year at this stage could be the year that you guys win this title in this particular era. We shall see. We shall see. But I could easily see you guys uh, getting it done. I mean, again, you inherited Kevin Love. I'd like to think you wouldn't waste that opportunity. I'd like to think you wouldn't waste it, but you never know. Not the strongest start to the season either. Losing record for the Timberwolves in the early stages of the season. 500 through their first 10 games. See what happens. That Western Conference is looking pretty decent. There they go. Well, you did get an offer for Beasley, but it's maybe not what you wanted. Unprotected first rounder from Denver and Luis Scola. Uh, that would leave you with Tony Allen as your starter. <laughs> I get the whole idea of wanting to improve on Michael Beasley, but I, uh, I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah, okay. Moving on. Moving on. Beasley for Tabo, well, Tabo Cephalosha in a first. Again, doesn't fit the uh, position upgrade that you need at all. Um, so again, doesn't make sense. The directive I'm seeing is an upgrade on Beasley for Beasley. That was not it. That was not it. Ian Mahimi in a second for Campaz. I'm going to decline that. Um, hell of a run lately. Okay, so Gilbert Arenas, I'm not that interested in, but a first round pick in 2016, even though it's lottery protected. JJ Hickson has kind of flatlined, and Robert Covington could be the starter. And he's it's not exactly an upward trajectory for JJ at this stage. I could get a first rounder. Have Gilbert Arenas at point guard this season and try to flip him. 2016 is a dude to draft. It is, but the key is that this is lottery protected. Meaning, now I don't think we're going to get that far, to be honest. I think you guys are going to win a title before that. But that means this could be a uh, 2017 draft. And that could be Jason Tatum, Donovan Mitchell, Bam, John Collins, De'Aaron Fox. I mean, you know. I mean, that 2016 draft could be Sabonis, Siakam, fucking Ben Simmons. Like I said, I just don't really have the faith in J.J. Hickson. So another first round pick isn't the worst thing in the world. I do want to see how my team is doing really quickly. Uh, we are 10 and 6. The Wizards are 15 and 1. Meaning that pick is not likely... To be a lottery selection. I'm going to decline that. It is very likely that that would end up being a, a late 2016 pick. I'm going to decline that. No, thank you. No, thank you. It was tempting. Cavaliers with a, a half-decent record. The best our records looked in a long time. Why two centers and a first-rounder? I mean, C.J. McCollum, it would clear up. It would clear up the log jam at shooting guard. Oladipo is the guy. Holiday behind him is not too bad. It would get me Alex Len, who was 20 years old, obviously just taken in the last draft, apparently only has the C potential, and in the veteran center in the form of Channing Fry. I mean, it would be nice to have a better backup to Drummond than Vaughn, but Vaughn's honestly not that bad. I'm going to say no to that. That's not the right deal to get rid of McCollum, especially giving up another pick. Let's march on. Let us march on. Still a decent record for the Cavs. Honestly. I'm taking those first rounders out of the equation. I'm willing to move those now. I am willing to move those. 
one two week injury for Reggie Bullock isn't ideal, but that's okay. A little bit more open for business. 19 and 6 for the Timberwolves, 16 and 9. For the Cavaliers, both of our teams doing pretty, pretty well. You guys have been on an amazing run lately. Started off slow, but that is a monstrous winning streak. Before finally losing to the Bulls and the Pacers. Uh, again, doesn't get you the upgrade at forward that you would want. Ronnie Brewer is 28 years old. You'd be trading out Plumley for Craig. Craig is 23B and a 79. So you'd be getting a center that directly competes with Hal Lyles, who's recovering from a broken leg, no less. Yeah, doesn't make too much sense for you. I don't know if you're going to find that direct improvement for Beasley. Center wasn't bad, but imagine being named Gerald Craig in 2013. <laughs> Two first names, and they're both the names of old, old men. We got Plumley since Lyle's. I mean, Lyle was freaking two days away from coming back. So, 23 and 11. Timberwolves, hey, yeah, you beat me. Sweet. Uh, Timberwolves seem pretty, pretty up and down. Uh, holiday for Wolf. Lexi Wolf, 22 years old, C minus. Yeah, I'm not that desperate to get rid of him. Especially with McCollum in developmental here. Let's see. 21 and 15. Cavs are a little bit better than I thought we'd be, even if we end up around 500. Uh, how good is Bailey? 20 years old, C minus. That might be about the best I can get for Holiday. But he is a 71. He's technically worse than Boyan Kramer, the random dude that filled in for me. So I'm going to say no to that as well. D Wolves are going on about the profits. It's all about the profit. As they say. In the Middle East. <laughs> I got to work on the Kings Yotes flight today. Ooh, you got to handle the Stanley Cup while being in Australia. That's cool as shit. Did you get a picture with it? Even just the outside of the case? Just being like, hey, you know what's in here? All right. Less than a month out from the deadline. Both of our teams on a playoff pace. Will there be a deal that perhaps comes through for either one of us that changes things? <sighs> he doesn't play the position you'd necessarily want. He plays guard or point guard. But Thompson can play forward. There is a chance your coach would run Ellis at guard, Thompson at forward, and you'd move Michael Beasley and Anderson. It's a risk because, again, you got to go off of how the coach sets up your team. But adding Monta Ellis to that team probably puts you over the edge. I'm not seeing anyone rejected in chat. If your coach is smart, well, I'm seeing Mac rejected. He's the only one so far. Um, even if Monta was the sixth man. Anyone want to join Mac in saying no? Because for the most part, it looks like this is uh, this is a yes. Oh, Quinn joined him in saying no. We'll put it up to a vote. We'll do it. We'll do it. It's a strat. It's a bold strategy. And they just signed Ellis to a new deal. You move on from Birdman as well, so the cap's pretty pretty close. There's Monta Ellis. That, that's a yes. That is very, very likely a yes. There's a couple more no votes sneaking in there, but it's going to take a lot more than that. It's going to take more than that. It's a big lead for yes. I'm waiting. All right, it's slowing down. That trade's going through. Michael Beasley and the Burb Man on their way to Charlotte for Monta Ellis. That is the done deal. And might that be the deal that wins chat this era? The AI is smart. It's Paul 
Ellis, Thompson, Love, and Lyles leading the way for Minnesota. The coach is smart. And that might be enough. And yes, we will call up Plumley as well. Hey, Jay, it's all good, man. Don't worry about it. So obviously, like right now, his morale is down, but he was at least playing. So it looks wor his overall looks worse than it actually is for Plumley. Where did Lawson go? Currently out six to eight weeks. Currently out six to eight weeks. Plumley is not currently going to be starting. I mean, you guys might as well drop it down to a freaking seven man bench then at this point. Get Allen in there, not worry about the rest. So yeah, we'll see what the uh, team looks like. I imagine Lawson will be the sixth man, and you guys could very well have this in the bag. If we're being honest, I'm going to be dropping my bench down to seven. Andre Drummond is currently out four to six weeks, so I have a major injury of my own to deal with. We're both very well playoff bound at this rate, but you guys are... Lined up better than you have ever been to win a championship here. Flat out. Flat out. So I get an offer for Hickson. <laughs> it's Hickson in a second for Tony Malone. That's going to be a no. I know it's Darko, but that's going to be a no for me. Cavs keep winning games here and there despite the Drummond injury. You guys get an offer. Ooh. You, you know, that would have been one to consider previously, but not one to consider now, now that you have the other center. Tight spot. Thank you for the five months on the primer, by the way. Uh, that one's not worth considering right now, given the circumstances that you're in. AJ, you, you can ask whatever you want. I don't know if I'll answer it. Um, Lyles for Morris makes no sense, given that Lyles is your starting center. So decline that one as well. The AI right now realize how strong you are, and they're trying to tear you down. I don't blame them. <laughs> McCollum. Oh, it's Jason Smith. Who's 27 in theory for NHL? Could we do this for 24? Uh, we can't because you can't control two teams on NHL. Unless it's season mode, which makes draft picks irrelevant. Yeah, that one's not worth it for me either, CJ. You're staying. Solo, I meant. As in chat trying to win for themselves. It is bad enough to have to watch you guys fumble around while I have my own team. You want me to then watch you fumble around and I have no way to go out and win on my own at the same time? <laughs> I'm just at the mercy of chat's complete and utter inability to win anything? Why not? Because I don't want to die of boredom. Can chat win a cup in NHL 25 years later? LOL, no. <laughs> That's the answer. LOL, no. <laughs> don't bore me to death, please. All right, is streamer willing to bore himself to death for the sake of chat? I mean, maybe. Who knows? Jesus, but we won last year. Who cares about last year? And you've gotten absolutely spanked this year. I won a title in two years. Two. You didn't win a title in two seasons, chat. You're fucking dragged. The AI can win a cup of rat with a yes and a no punch. Can win a cup. Oh, God. Can a, can a coin toss win the Stanley Cup? Oh, man. All right, Cavs are starting to fall back down towards 500. Might sneak into the playoffs, might not. To be honest, I would not mind another lottery pick. I really wouldn't. I'm going to go to an eight-man bench. Covington is still hurt. Uh, for you guys, no injured players. Lawson is your sixth man. Try to keep people healthy. You can drop it to an eight-man to get Tony Allen some playing time. I mean, shit. You could drop it even further for Plumlee to get playing time, but he's 11th on that old depth chart. 46 wins already for the Wolves. It'll be another easy 50. 
as we'll see if, in fact, both of us make the playoffs. And if the T-Wolves can end it this season. Like I said, I don't put it past you. You had a couple of other teams in that category of potential championship winners. Any year could be your year now at this stage. And Ellis puts you guys right over the edge. I think you guys got it, to be honest. You don't have a profitable team. Your owner's hemorrhaging money. <laughs> but I think you got it. League MVP, Chicago's Derek Rose. Back-to-back -back MVPs for D-Rose. Rookie of the Year, Cleveland's Victor Oladipo. Average 20 points this year as a starter. At a boy, Victor. Sixth Man of the Year, the Clippers' Paul Millsap. Defensive Player of the Year, yet again, is Dwight Howard. Of course, now in Boston. Most Improved Player, San Antonio's Jared Sullinger. Coach of the Year, Thunder Scott Brooks. They're going for the three Pete. And their executive of the year wins, or the executive of the year is their guy again for the third year in a row. All NBA first team is Rose, John Wall, Kawhi Leonard turning into the man I need him to be, Anthony Davis, and Demarcus Cousins. Your all defensive team is Wall, Wade, Duncan, Hamez, and Dwight Howard. And the all rookie team, Facundo. Otto Porter, Lindsey Kersey, who I almost ended up with. Giannis and Victor Oladipo. Not bad. Not bad at all. So in the postseason, the Timberwolves are again the second seed in the West. They'll take on the San Antonio Spurs in round one. It is Utah and Sacramento, Houston and Los Angeles, OKC and Denver. In the East, it is Miami and Brooklyn, Toronto and Indiana, Washington and Milwaukee, and the Chicago Bulls take on your Cleveland Cavaliers. Back in the playoffs for the first time, baby. We're going to get two home playoff games and then get fisted by Derrick Rose. We're going to get fucking destroyed, but we've made the playoffs and I'm happy about it as the seventh seed, no less, no matter what we were fucked Miami or Chicago, but that shows that my team is on the rise. Even though JJ Hickson's hurt, my team's on the rise. That's what I needed to see this year. I'm getting closer to the point where one big addition puts me into contention because Kawhi is that star. I am where you guys were not that long ago. Here's my Kevin Love. If I can find that other star to pair with him, I'm looking pretty good. Timberwolves, though, this is your chance. This is at... Uh-oh. 